When treating a patient with dementia, oftentimes the family has a lot of questions and concerns, somewhat about the treatment and the effectiveness, but also just about the experience and the process of getting them into the chamber. Today, we're gonna to talk about the latter, the process and the procedures that we have helping a patient with dementia into a hyperbaric chamber, making sure that they're safe, that they're comfortable, and able and willing to go through a series of treatments. One of the most important things that I think I can say about applying hyperbaric oxygen therapy for patients diagnosed with dementia is that the earlier those folks come in for therapy, the more likely a positive benefit will be found. Now that's true for virtually every condition, especially all the neurologic conditions. The sooner they start their process, the more likely we're gonna have very, very strong and positive results. I say that because there will be people who contact you in varying stages of the disease. And sometimes they're exploring their options, but they're not yet willing to commit to the process. And I think if you catch a family that is exploring options early in the diagnosis, and you can sense the idea that they're not quite willing to commit to the process because the person doesn't seem like their symptoms or their issues are quite bad enough yet, I think it's really important. I think it's our moral obligation to have this conversation with that family, to let them know that if we're gonna hope to help this person shift cognitively, that the earlier and the sooner we get to these treatments, the more impactful they're going to be. That's not to say that we don't see results with people in more moderate stages of the disease, but certainly those folks need far more sessions over a far longer period of time than somebody that we're catching in the more mild stages of the disease. That being said, there's just a few other concepts that I wanna discuss because oftentimes the family has some concerns about their loved one going inside the chamber, feeling comfortable inside the chamber, feeling safe inside the chamber, equalizing their ears and helping them manage the pressure changes inside the chamber. And so those are the kinds of things I wanna talk about today. Step number one is the patient orientation. We do this with every patient coming in, no matter what they're coming in for. We take a little bit more time with this family and in particular with this patient because we wanna make sure that they feel very confident, very comfortable, and all of their questions are answered. And that new patient orientation is a pretty detailed explanation of how the equipment works, what the process is, what to expect, what position are they gonna be in, how do they get into the chamber, all the things you would wanna know about the process of getting into a chamber, being exposed to pressure, breathing oxygen, depressurizing, and getting out of the chamber. In our office, we've developed a script of exactly how we want that patient orientation to go, and I recommend that you do the same thing. We then also have an abbreviated version of that, and for patients with dementia, we literally deliver the abbreviated patient orientation for that patient before every session. In many cases, that could feel very repetitive, especially for the technicians delivering the abbreviated orientation. However, I think it's really important to remind the patient, this is why you're here, this is what we're doing. This is what the chamber's like. This is what we need from you. This is how that's gonna go. This is what we're going to do. This is how you get out. All of the details about what you want that patient to remember so that they have a, an immediate reminder of what the experience is going to be, just in case they forget. Especially, as you well know, if you're treating patients in general in the chamber, a lot of folks fall asleep, which is totally okay. However, you don't want this patient to fall asleep and wake up and then be afraid. Where am I? Why am I here? What is this? What's on my face? What thing am I in? Now, we're not going to eliminate the entire possibility of something like that still happening, but by going over this mini orientation each time, you're just decreasing the likelihood that that might happen. The next thing that we often recommend is that we have a caregiver, a loved one, go inside the chamber with them. This just creates a level of comfort, a reduced anxiety, and again, in those moments where that person may fall asleep and wake up, a familiar face to look at when they wake up so that they're not immediately concerned or anxious about where they are. Also, this person can immediately communicate, hi, hope you had a nice nap. You know, remember, we're inside the chamber, just breathing some oxygen. It gives them a sense of comfort immediately, and I think that that's critical for a lot of these patients. Ultimately, like most conditions, dementia lives on a continuum of very severe to very mild. I said earlier that catching these people in the earlier stages of this disease, the impact we will have will be much greater and much faster. People in the more severe levels of this disease, it's gonna take a lot more hours and a lot more time to start seeing some of the benefits. In any of these cases, this is not gonna be a short-term plan. It's gonna be a long-term plan. So like most other conditions, keeping people happy, keeping people safe, 
keeping people comfortable is going to increase the likelihood that they'll be able to see through the entire course of care for whatever you're recommending. And these are some of the steps that we use to help make sure these patients are comfortable. So as always, I hope this information is helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.